Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable maths video. In this video we are looking at deriving the angle addition formally and we're going to be using complex numbers for this as well. Okay so that's quite fun. So the only prerequisite knowledge for complex numbers is you need to know Euler's identity and we will write that down in just one moment. The angle addition formally on the other hand sometimes called the compound angle formally you might know them as but they are as follows. So sine of A plus B, where A and B are just two angles, they could be the same, A and B could be the same, and that's where you get the double angle formally from. But you can assume that they're different angles, A and B. Uh, we get that sine A um, plus B is equal to sine A times cos B plus sine B times cos A, and then there's the one for cos as well. Cos of A plus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Likewise, you can have sine of A minus B and cos of A minus B, and you get various results from that. We're not going to go into sine of a minus b and cos of a minus b because once you already have these ones that I've written down on the board here, they're very, very easy to derive sine of a minus b. So we want to derive those formulae that I've actually just written above. How do we go about that? The only formula that you need to know to do this is the one that goes as follows. e to the power of i theta where Theta, again, is just some angle or value. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, it has to be in radians. Uh, but e to the i theta, where theta is an angle in radians, and i is the square root of minus 1, the complex number there. That is equal, or identical rather, to cos theta plus i times sine theta, where, again, i is the square root of minus 1. So this is Euler's identity. I can potentially do another video in the future deriving this, but as long as you already assume that this is true, then we can essentially get going. So the brilliant thing about this proof here, about showing this with the uh, addition formulae, is that you can prove sine and cos at the same time. You don't need to do two separate cases. So it's really cool. So theta in this formula is just an angle. It's just like, you know, just it's just an angle or a value. Well, what if it was just the sum of two other angles? So we can, let me show you what I mean. We can say that, theta is just some arbitrary two other values a and b right just theta is just a and b so we can substitute a plus b uh, for theta uh, so we can then get cos of a plus b plus i times sine of a plus b just like that now we can then uh, rewrite e to the i times a plus b as e to the i times a plus e to the i times b, right? Just literally expanding that bracket out in the exponent. That is then equal to, I'm going to move this down here because otherwise my face is going to be in the way. That is then identical to cos, there it is, cos of um, a plus b still. Same thing, we, we haven't actually done anything mathematically here. So yeah, we haven't actually done anything. We've just, we've literally just rearranged the left-hand side of this equation here, or identity, I suppose you could call it. And then using exponentiation rules, we can say that e to the i times a plus i b, like this, well, we know that that's the same thing as e to the i a uh, times e to the i b right it's just exponentiation rules it's like it's index laws there we go and again that's still equal to the cos a plus b plus i sine a plus b right of course it is again we haven't done anything to the right hand side of this identity so now we actually know hold on but e to the i times a well hold on we can rewrite that and we and e to the i times b as well as just Euler's formula with a and b not a plus b anymore so e to the i a let's rewrite this over here e to the i a just using the same formula Euler's relation uh, or Euler's identity or whatever you want to call it that's just equal to cos of a plus i sine of a right like theta is just a now that's all we've done if we look back at Euler's identity we can see here this is it e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. So if we just use a instead, it's e to the i a is cos a plus i sine a. 
that's all we've done. We've just said A and A is going to be theta now, sort of thing. And likewise, e to the i b is the same thing, but with b's, it's cos b plus i times sine of b, yeah? But we've already said up here that this is this is a true thing. We've, we, we know that this is true, this line here. e to the i a times e to the i b is cos of a plus b plus i sine of a plus b. So e to the i a times e to the i b, well, let's just do that. So what's these two things multiply together? Well, if we put, if I rewrite this down here, and that is still identical to cos of a plus b plus i times sine of a plus b, okay? And the reason why that's identical there is because we already said that e to the i a times e to the i b is cos a plus b plus i sine a plus b. So now we've literally just got, okay, IA is this, IB is this. Let's actually just chuck this all in. And look at that. Now we've just got a bunch of trigonometry and it is a total mess, but we can do this. So we can just sort of cross multiply here. So we can go cos A times cos B. You know, what's that going to be? That's just cos A cos B, right? And then we can go using foil. That's first. We can do outside if we want. So we get this, so cos A times I sine B, that's plus I times, I'll, I'll do sine first, so sine B cos A cos B. Uh, and then that's that part. We then go, we can go with inside here. So this is plus I times sine A cos B. Uh, that is, let me just check that, cos A sine B, uh, that should be, that should be an A, my bad guys, that should be an A. Uh, yeah, so uh, inside so I sine A times cos B, we get cos B there. And finally outside, we get I sine A times I sine B. The I's multiply to make minus one, we just get minus sine A sine B. Okay, because the i's multiply together to make minus one by definition. And um, I'll come over here. That is still identical to cos a plus b plus i times sine of a plus b. Okay, so I know it's a total mess, but now this is quite good. So something that we can do when we're dealing with complex numbers is we can do something called equating coefficients. If we have two complex numbers that are equal to each other, and in a way, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this identity, they are technically both complex numbers um, or, you know, values or, or functions or, or whatever you want to call them. They're, they're two complex things. Uh, we can equate the real parts of both sides and the imaginary parts. So the imaginary parts are the parts that are being multiplied by i. On both sides, they must be equal. Same with the real parts. They're the parts that are not being multiplied by i. So let's look at the reals. So I'll do, uh, I'll do this in purple here. So the real, uh, the real parts, we can have two separate equations for these things. So let's do the real equation. Well, cos A cos B, that's real because that doesn't have any I's involved. So cos A cos B, what else is real on the left? Well, that's I sine B cos A, that's not real. I sine A cos B, that's not real. But look at the next one. We have minus sine A sine B, that's definitely real. So sine A sine B. And then that is identical to the real part of the right-hand side, which is just cos A plus B. And actually, out of thin air, look at what we've got right here, guys. We have actually got the angle addition formula for cos A plus B. It's right there. Nice. Okay, now let's look at the imaginary parts, and let's think about what might we find by evaluating the imaginary parts, right? Maybe another formula. Um, okay, let's look at the imaginary parts of both sides. We don't need to include the i's because everything is times by i. So we can just divide by i at the end. So I'm going to write the imaginary parts, but not with the i's in front. Okay, if that makes sense. So on the left-hand side, we have i sine b cos a. That's imaginary, but I'm not going to put the i in front of it. So I'm going to say sine of b cos a. 
And also another thing on the left hand side that's imaginary is the next term, which is the sine A cos B. So this is sine A cos B, just like that. Uh, that's imaginary as well. And on the right hand side, the only thing that's imaginary, as we can see in this corner here, is the I sine A plus B. So that is sine of A plus B, just like that. And again, the reason why we're equating the imaginary parts, but we're not having the i's in front is because we could we could say okay well i sine plus i sine plus i sine but we would just then okay we just be like all right let's just divide everything by i so it's just about saving time so we can divide everything by i and we just get this so the imaginary parts uh, are uh, all equal on both sides but look at this this is the angle addition formula for sine of a plus b it's right here it's amazing it's literally this so if we rewrite it so the other way around for uh, clearness, we and I'll write sine first. From what we've just derived, we get sine of a plus b is identical to uh, sine. Oh, I'll swap the order of the terms around as well. I'm going to write like this uh, term first because it has the sine a cos b, which I think that's a bit neater. And then plus, uh, we're now going to plus this term. So that is sine b cos a and this is literally the angle addition formula for sine and then we end up with cos of a plus b is identical to and what have we derived oh it's identical to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b just like that and again, that is literally the addition formula for cos of a plus b. So we've got the cos of a plus b, we've got sine of a plus b. And as you can see, if we go all the way back up to the top after, you know, before all of this algebra mess, you can see at the very top, these are the exact same equations. They are the exact same. So we have successfully derived the angle addition formula for sine and cosine. Um, and that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was informative. There are other ways to do this. You can you can do this with a big graph or a big sort of series of triangles and evaluate the whole thing. But this is the neatest way to do it. So I hope I've saved you some time. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.